What's up everyone? Finally, as promised, we're diving into the MLB action here on Sunday, April 7th. Our Saturday NBA and NCAA basketball picks haven't all finished yet. We're cooling off a little bit after a super hot run there on Friday, but things aren't looking too bad right now. We were on the wrong side of NC State plus 9.5, but I will defend that pick a little bit. They were close down the stretch in that game before falling off a little bit at the very, very end to lose by just barely too many points. UConn is still very live in this one. Hopefully they're dominating enough here in the second half that they'll come out with a win and cover for us. We did see Cleveland plus 5 and a half that did not come through. Cleveland is doing their best to end up on a do not bet list. The under in that game came through though. We nailed the Nets minus seven and a half and the over in that game. We've got some other games still to finish, but we've got a bunch of games to cover here today and we're very excited to dive into one of our favorite and most profitable sports. Hit that like button to keep these picks coming every day and subscribe to the channel if you're new. We appreciate all the support lately, but still over 70% of our viewers aren't subscribed. I know we can bump that number up a little bit. It's 100% free and will keep you from missing out on our daily videos. These videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Com. Click the link in the description to go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports brought to you by our entire team of experts. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today. We'll give you our best advice. We respond to every single comment. So let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks are posted in the pinned comments down below. Now let's get into our first match of the day. We've got the Arizona Diamondbacks going up against the Atlanta Braves. This is day game. We've got a 1235 start. We see the Diamondbacks lost both of the first two games of this series. The first one they lost 6-5. to five. The second one was 9-8, to eight, so these have been very, very close contests so far. We've got Ryan Nelson on the bump going up against Chris Sale. Nelson did not get off to the best start. He took the loss in his first start of the season. He had two strikeouts in that game, and that's where the positive things ended. He's posting an ERA of 13 and a half right now. He only lasted two and two-thirds innings against the Yankees. He gave up five hits, five runs, four of them are earned. He had four walks in that game, so he was really struggling with his control. This is a young guy. He's only 26 years old, so we're not exactly just going to throw the baby out with the bat water here, but this is not the start that clearly he or the Diamondbacks were hoping for. This guy was not terrible a year ago. He did walk some batters, but I think a little bit of this could be attributed to just an off day on his first start of the season, but just in general, something to keep an eye on in this one. The guy is not off to a hot start. He's going up against Chris Sale, who had a pretty solid first game of his season. He pitched five and a third, gave up five hits, two runs. Both of them were earned. He did give up a home run, but he had seven strikeouts and two walks in that game, so not exactly a terrible outing, but not the domination that we've seen from Chris sale at different points in his career. Arizona's off to a four and five start overall. They got one win in their series against the Yankees. Three of their wins came against the lowly Colorado Rockies. They won three out of four in their first series. Then they lost that series to the New York Yankees. They've already lost this series to the Atlanta Braves, and they're trying to avoid a sweep in this one. The Braves come into this game, like I said, with Sale on the bump. The hope is that Sale's in for another great year. They're off to a pretty decent start. They won two or three games against the Phillies to start the season. They had one blowout against the White Sox, but then lost their other game and then saw their other game get postponed. And then they've won these back-to-back one-run games over the Arizona Diamondbacks. Looking at the money line for this game, we see that we've got the Diamondbacks plus 180. We've got the Atlanta Braves minus 210. Those seem pretty steep to me, but these have been very close games. We see that Atlanta's minus one and a half on the spread, and we've got an over-under of nine and a half. Out of all these options, the one that appeals probably the most to me is just going to be the chalky one. I think Atlanta minus 210 is fine in this game. I think we'll see Sale have a very good outing, so the over-under, I would definitely lean towards the under in this game despite both teams having slight trends here in the early goings to the over. I think we'll see Sale have a very good game. We could see the Braves have an offensive eruption though, so I couldn't fault you too much if you want to take Atlanta minus one and a half in this game, but they've played close games in both of the other ones this series, so really, I'm going to stick with the safe bet. I think the Braves win this game the vast majority of the time. Give me Atlanta minus 210. Next up, another Sunday day game. We've got the Baltimore Orioles going on the road to take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Baltimore just lost 5-4 to four in their second game of this series against the Pirates. The Pirates one game one, five to two. We're looking at Dean Kremer on the bump for the Orioles in his first start of the season. He actually had a pretty decent outing against the Orioles. He didn't manage to get the win in that game. He pitched five and a third, gave up three hits, three runs, and the concerning part of that is he gave up two home runs to the Royals, which isn't exactly a great look. He did have five strikeouts in that game, only one walk. So those numbers look decent, but those two big mistakes, those two home runs, those will really come back to haunt you. Last year, we saw this guy look pretty good. He finished things up with a 13 and five record overall, which is very respectable. His four point 0.12 ERA isn't amazing, but his walk to strikeout ratio is pretty good. And just in general, he's got to have high hopes for this season. I think the Orioles are hoping that he will have another good year, despite something of a rocky start against the Royals in a game that Baltimore did eventually win. Overall, we see Baltimore come into this game looking pretty decent right out of the gate. They're five and three overall. They won their opening series against the Angels. Then they won their series against the Royals, and they're looking for a win in this game to start things off three and zero in terms of series played this season. They're going to have their work cut out for them at least a little bit, though. The Pirates are 
a very solid team. They've gotten off to a good start this year. Pittsburgh is 7-2, and two, and they're handing the ball to Marco Gonzalez in this one. Gonzalez got a season off to a very, very good start. He didn't get the win in the game, but he pitched five innings, only gave up four hits and one earned run in that game. He did have two walks and two strikeouts, not exactly striking a ton of people out, but he looked very, very good in that game. He's sporting a 1.8 ERA so far, so the guy got off to a good start. He's a lefty pitcher, so that's a little bit of an advantage, I feel like, in this game. The Pirates have gotten off to an absolutely flying start, but a little bit of that has to be due to the fact they got to play four games against the lowly Miami Marlins to start the season, winning all four of those, sweeping that opening round series. Some of those games were close, the first one and the fourth one, but other than that, the games in the middle were blowouts, and those games were in Miami, so they were playing on the road there. And the Pirates, they're a resurgent franchise. Hopes are extremely high in Pittsburgh right now. They won that series against the Nationals, which was very solid, and now they're looking to get the series win here against the Baltimore Orioles. In game two of this series, we saw the Pirates get the win in 11 innings, so extra innings here in the early season. The bullpen might be a little bit worse worn out, but you might not want to stretch guys out here in the early going, so I totally understand that. Looking at the money line, we see that the Orioles are minus 125 for this game. We've got the Pirates at plus 105. Pittsburgh is also plus one and a half on the spread for this one, and the over-under is at eight and a half. We see both of these teams with significant trends to the overs, but I think both of these pitchers could be in for relatively solid days. But with seven runs scored in the first game of the series, nine in the second game in very much extra innings, I'm a little bit scared away from the over-under in this one. I'm leaning more towards the Pirates at home in this game. I do think Marco Gonzalez is the better pitcher in this matchup. We've seen the Pirates get off to a very good start so far this year. They're actually 7-2 and two on the run line, so if you wanted to take Pittsburgh plus 1.5, I wouldn't fault you, but I like them more to just win this game straight up. Plus 105 seems good to me. Give me the Pirates at home plus 105. Next up, we've got another day game. We've got the Toronto Blue Jays playing in New York, taking on the Yankees. The Blue Jays lost game two of this series 9-8 to eight with a Rizzo home run leading the Yankees to the win. It looks like, once again, this could be another season where Toronto has some pitching woes. In this one, we see Bowden Francis going up against Luis Gill. Francis did not get his season off to a good start at all. He's 0-1. He's sporting an 11.81 ERA and 5.1 innings pitched. He gave up 10 hits. He did have seven strikeouts, but he gave up three home runs. Not exactly a fantastic performance. It's looking like this could be another season where the Blue Jays struggle to find consistent pitching. Although getting absolutely shelled by the Houston Astros, I guess that's not the biggest embarrassment ever, but definitely not what they hoped for from their young strikeout pitcher. He's going to have his work cut out for him in this one going up against the Yankees who just hit three home runs last night and Luis Gill has to feel very good about how he started his season off going up against the Diamondbacks he pitched 4.2 innings so not a long outing but he had six strikeouts he only gave up one hit and one run he did have three walks in that game so that's a little bit of a concern but just in general he got off to a solid start albeit not against a great team obviously the Toronto Blue Jays are going to be a much better offensive team than the Diamondbacks are but regardless a solid start is a solid start, even if it's not against the best team out there. Right now, we see the over-under for this game is at 8.5. We see the Yankees are minus 150. Toronto is plus 130 in this game. And Toronto is the one getting the run and a half. My lean on this game is going to be the Yankees minus 1.5. They're plus 135 at that number. I think that's pretty good. I think they're going to win this game convincingly. They're going to hit some home runs against Francis. I don't think that the Blue Jays are going to have nearly as much success hitting the ball against Gill. And we know that the Yankees' bullpen, while it did just take a hit in terms of injury news, I think is going to be all right. Go ahead and give me the Yankees, minus one and a half, plus 135 in this game. Next up, we've got the Chicago White Sox going on the road to take on the Kansas City Royals. Chicago is on the verge of getting swept in this one. They've looked absolutely terrible to start this season off. They're 1-7 overall, not having a good time. They lost yesterday 3 to nothing. Not a good look. Don't want to be getting shut out. Things are just not off to a good start at all. We've got Garrett Crochet on the bump for the White Sox. He's a left-handed pitcher. He did get a season off to a very good start so far. He's 1-1 one one overall. He's got a 1.38 ERA, so he is absolutely killing it. He's got 16 strikeouts so far this season, only 8 hits and only a single walk. So he is off to a fantastic start. He's ready to get out there and dominate going up against a Royals team who is off to a pretty good start giving the projections for them coming into this season. Although three of their wins, three of their five wins overall have come against the White Sox. Those have been in pretty solid fashion, albeit one of them was a two to one win. So not exactly something to write home about, but they did have 10 runs in the first game of the series. They won, managed to win a game against the Orioles. So that's pretty solid. And they had an 11 run, an 11 to zero win in an outburst over the Minnesota Twins. Kansas City is actually handing the ball to Alec Marsh. He is also off to a very good start to his season. He's 1-0. He's sporting a 1.29 ERA. He gave only two hits in his season opening start. A very good outing against the Baltimore Orioles. A game where he pitched seven innings, so very, very good start for him. Absolutely could not ask for more in a guy's first start of the season. He is looking very, very good here to start the year, and he's helping the Royals get off to this good start. Right now,
right now we're looking at an over under in this game of eight and a half. Kansas City is the one. They're minus one and a half in this game. They're minus 126 overall. And we see the White Sox, they're catching plus 115. My lean on this game is definitely going to be under eight and a half. I think both of these pitchers are in for very solid outings against teams that do not impress me offensively. We also see some trends. It's very early in the season to be looking at trends. I'll give you that, but we're going to go ahead and take a peek anyway. We see Chicago is 4-2-1 to the under this season. We see Kansas City is 4-3-1 to the under, so give me under 8.5 runs in this game. I think it's going to be very low scoring. I'm not sure who's going to come out on the top, but there's not going to be a lot of offense. Next up, we've got the Cleveland Guardians going on the road to take on the Minnesota Twins. Last night, we saw the Guardians come away with a 3-1 win. They're off to a great start this season. They've only lost two games. They're 7-2 and two overall. They've already clinched a series win in this one. They won their series against the Seattle Mariners in pretty solid fashion with both their wins coming convincingly and their only loss coming by a single run. They dominated the Oakland A's winning three or four games in that one. Pretty much everybody's going to have their way with the A's this season. That's going to be a pretty sad story. We're not going to be monitoring that one too close. It's just too depressing. In this game, we see Cleveland handing the ball to Tristan McKenzie. He's one of their few starters that haven't had a good time so far this season. He's sporting a 10.8 ERA. He only pitched 3.1 innings in his opening game start. He got kind of rocked by the Mariners. Could not make it deep into that game. He had two strikeouts, two walks. He gave up a home run in that game. He was just getting knocked around. Not the way he wanted to start this season off for sure. He's a young guy he's got a chance to bounce back and he's also got a chance to be carried by this Cleveland offense which is off to a great start they're fifth in the league in total runs produced they're eighth in the league in overall batting average they're on base percentage is fantastic their slugging percentage has them in the top half of the league everything is clicking for this offense right now they're going to be hoping they can have a very good game going up against Bailey Ober who also didn't get off to the hottest start to his season in his start against the Royals a game that we saw the twins lose 11 to nothing he only lasted one and a third innings he gave up nine hits, six runs, three home runs in that game. He had one walk and one strikeout. The guy got absolutely lit up, and it's not looking too hot for him to start the season. Obviously, is the first game of the year, so things can change. Things can develop. He could obviously have just had a bad outing, but man, that is not how you want things to go right off the bat. In your first game off the bump, you don't want to get absolutely destroyed, and you definitely don't want to get destroyed by a team like the Kansas City Royals. The Twins' offense, not off to a great start at all. They're in the bottom third of the league in most major statistical categories. They've only scored 20 runs combined this season. That's 27th in the majors. Their batting average is just barely over 200. Their slugging percentage is terrible. Like, things are just not looking very good for the Twins right now. And the odds makers are kind of on the opposite side of that. Right now, we see Minnesota minus 130. Cleveland's getting a run and a half, but on that run and a half, they're sitting at about minus 190 or minus 195. So not exactly super enticing there. And we see the over-under in this game is sitting at eight. You see, Cleveland definitely has some trends to the over right now. Minnesota has some trends to the under, obviously with that terrible off offense. Guys, this is an interesting spot. I lean definitely towards Cleveland plus 110 in this game. I think they're just the much better overall team. I think they're going to win this game the majority of the time. Obviously, with McKenzie on the mound, that's a big concern. We have to hope that he has a bounce back performance in this one, but I think they've got faith in him. I've got a little bit of faith in him to have a better start. Maybe that was just opening game nerves. I don't have any faith at all in Ober. I don't really like what I'm seeing from him at all, and I really, really don't like what I'm seeing from the Minnesota Twins. Definitely give me Cleveland plus 110 in this one. If you wanted to take them plus one and a half, I guess you could, but that seems wildly unnecessary to me. I think they'll win this game pretty comfortably. I wouldn't super hate taking a little taste of the over in this game, just on the outside chance that McKenzie has another bad game and Ober gives up a bunch of runs, but my favorite bet in this one is definitely the Guardians plus 110. Next up, we're looking at the worst team in the MLB, the Miami Marlins, going on the road to take on the St. Louis Cardinals. Miami comes into this game still in search of their first one of the season. They are 0-9 so far. They just lost 3-1 to to St. Louis yesterday. Things are not looking very good for this team whatsoever. Miami hasn't been scoring any runs whatsoever. They've only scored 29 runs this season. And when they are scoring runs, they're giving up a ton. Their batting average isn't very good. None of their offensive numbers are looking very good. And they're not exactly handing the ball to a stud in this game or just in general. We saw Max Meyer in his first game of the season. He's had one of the best starts we've seen from Miami starter so far this year. He only gave up two runs in five innings pitched. He had two walks and four strikeouts. He did give up a home run in that game. Not really a terrible performance, I guess, at least by by Marlins standards, but they did end up losing that game 7-4, to four, despite having a semi-decent pitching performance. The Marlins are going to be taking on a veteran pitcher in this game. They're going up against Kyle Gibson for the Cardinals. Gibson got off to a fantastic start against the Padres. He pitched seven innings, gave up four hits, two earned runs. Both of them were home runs, so okay, giving up a little bit of the long ball, but against a Miami Marlins team, I guess that's not the biggest concern. Gibson had two walks in that game, four strikeouts, pretty solid first outing. Really nothing to turn your nose up at, especially here in the early goings. He's 1-0 
2-0 now. He got a win in his first start off to exactly the kind of beginning you want as a pitcher. And the St. Louis Cardinals in general, not off to the worst start, despite having to play four games to start the year against the Dodgers. They kept all of those games pretty competitive, except for the very first one. And they managed to get one win, a 6-5 win. Then they won their series against the Padres, and they've taken advantage here of the Miami Marlins, winning their first two games of this series. The first one, pretty convincingly, 8-5. The second one was a little bit closer, but they got that 3-1 win. So nothing to complain about there. The Cardinals aren't usually a team that starts off super fast. Their hitting numbers are a little bit pedestrian. I expect those to come up. This will be a decent offensive team this year, I believe. So just in general in this game, I'm definitely leaning towards the Cardinals. There's not a lot of positive things coming out of Miami right now. The Marlins are not having a very good time. Right now we're seeing the Cardinals. They are plus 143 or 150, somewhere in there if you're taking them minus one and a half. We see the Marlins. They are 0-9 this season against the run line. Guys, Give me the Cardinals, minus one and a half. I don't think we see this game be very close. You could actually take the under in this game if you wanted to. I do think the Cardinals will find a way to get to Max Meyer a little bit, put some runs on the board. I expect another very good outing from Kyle Gibson. I think he'll be able to keep from giving up those long balls like he gave up in the first game. And I just expect another very solid outing from him. So if you wanted to play it safe and just take the Cardinals minus 135 straight up, I wouldn't blame you. But my bet on this game is going to be the Cardinals minus one and a half, getting those solid odds. And I think the over-under in this game is a little bit live because I don't expect Miami to be scoring very many runs. Next up, we've got the Los Angeles Dodgers going on the road to take on the Chicago Cubs. The Dodgers won game two of this series, four to one in Chicago, a very solid game for them. The Dodgers with their massive payroll and their fantastic roster off to a flying start. They're eight and three overall, and this team is looking just about as dominant as you could possibly expect. In this game, we see the Dodgers handing the ball to Gavin Stone. This young pitcher did not get off to a fantastic start to his season. The Dodgers did get a win in that start, but he only pitched five innings. He gave up seven hits, three earned runs. He had six strikeouts. So he's piling up those strikeouts. Nothing too bad there. That was against the Cardinals. So a fairly solid team, but three runs in five innings isn't exactly great. And seven hits is a little bit of a concern. Although, like I said, only one walk. His control looked pretty good in that game. And he's a young guy. It was his first start of the season. So we're willing to cut him a little bit of slack. Maybe he'll have a slightly stronger outing here going up against the Chicago Cubs team. That'll be interesting to see. We're looking at the Dodgers looking very, very dominant. Their offensive numbers are nearly tops in the league just across the board. They've scored 64 runs already in this early season. That's nuts. Their team combined batting average is nearly 300 on the year. Their slugging percentage is wild. Their on-base percentage is wild. This team is looking exactly as stacked as it should with their massive, massive payroll. Nothing to nitpick about this team. They are looking absolutely dominant. The Chicago Cubs come into this game 5-3 and on the season so far. They did get a 9-7 to win in game one of this series, so that's very respectable, and they have to be pretty excited with who they're handing the ball to. Shota Imanaga got his season off to a fantastic start against the Colorado Rockies, so not exactly against elite competition, but he was dominant in that game. He gave up only two hits in six innings, and he had nine strikeouts and zero walks. This guy is looking exactly as good as projected. He's off to a fantastic start, looking like a monster. The problem could end up being his supporting cast, but so far this season, the Cubs are looking pretty good. They've scored 49 runs already. That's sixth in the league. Their batting average as a team is very solid. Their on-base percentage is actually a league best 384. That is very, very good. Obviously not sustainable, but still nice to see here in the early goings, them finding some success. Their slugging percentage isn't that wild, but just in general, things are looking very, very good. We see Ian Happ is off to a great start hitting the ball. Dansby Swanson's already got two home runs this year and is hitting 333. Just in general, this team is looking very, very good, and they're off to a good start. This should be a very interesting game. It looks fairly evenly matched. The Dodgers are only minus 105. We see the Cubs are only minus 110, with Chicago on the spread getting one and a half, but not getting too great of odds on that one. And the over-under in this game is eight and a half. Both of these teams have trends pointing to the over with both of them being pretty dominant. We see the Dodgers are seven, three and one to the over. We see Chicago is five and three to the over. So not too big of a surprise with both of these teams definitely putting up some runs. The over under in this game is eight and a half. Like I said, the question for this game is what are we going to see from Gavin Stone? Is he really going to look good going up against the Cubs who have been hitting the ball pretty well so far this season? My slight lean in this game is Chicago minus 110. I do think they have a very reasonable chance to win this game. And my other lean on this one is the over. I think we could see enough runs to get over this number. My concern with that one is Shota Imanaga being off to such a solid dominant start to this season. I think there's a definite chance that he could just dominate the Dodgers in this game and not give up a lot of runs. Although he did just dominate against the Colorado Rockies. So this is going to be a totally different look for him. Give me the Cubs minus 110 as a small taste and a little taste of the over in this game. 
In the last game we're going to look at tonight, we've got the Tampa Bay Rays going on the road to take on the Colorado Rockies. Tampa Bay is off to not the start they were hoping for this season. They're only 3-5 and five overall, and it looks like they're about to salt away this win against the Rockies. They're up 8-6 to six in the bottom of the ninth with one out already, so we're going to go ahead and put that on the board for the Rays. So we're going to say that they're four and five overall, but still for this team, that's not exactly the start that they had hoped for. The Rays are going to be handing the ball to Ryan Pepio in this game, and they're hoping for a much different result than they got from him in game one, where he got kind of knocked around by the Texas Rangers. He pitched five and two thirds innings. He gave up six runs. They were all six earned. He gave up a home run. And most concerningly of all, perhaps, is that the fact he gave up four walks and only three strikeouts. Not exactly the start they were hoping for from this young right-hander, but he should definitely be pretty live going up against the Colorado Rockies team that's not exactly firing on all cylinders right now. The Rays definitely haven't gotten off to the start they wanted. They split their four-game series with the Toronto Blue Jays to start the season. They only got one win against the Texas Rangers. The other games in that series weren't particularly close, and then they lost a barn burner, a 10-7 game against the Rockies. It seems like they might be about to right the ship, though, here with this win, this fairly close, fairly high-scoring win, and a win they definitely needed. They put up some run putting up some runs in this game definitely has to feel good, as this offense hasn't exactly been firing on all cylinders. They're pretty much middle of the pack right now. They haven't been scoring a ton of runs overall. Their team batting average has been pretty mediocre. Their slugging percentage is way down and their on-base percentage is also not great. They're going to need to use matchups against teams like the Rockies here to get things pointed in the right direction. Colorado is not off to a good start at all. They're about to be two and seven to start the season. They're handing the ball to Dakota Hudson and I guess you can't be too shocked when your fifth starter doesn't do great against the Chicago Cubs. That was a game that we saw the Rockies lose five to nothing in his first start of the season back on April 1st. He pitched five and a third innings, four hits, three runs, None of them were earned, though. Two walks and two strikeouts, so not the worst outing ever, but he still takes the loss in that game. He's still sporting an ERA of zero, so that's nice for him, I guess, but not so nice for his team taking the 5 to nothing loss in that game. Colorado, just in general, despite playing in one of the run-friendliest environments that you can possibly play in in all of MLB, they're pretty middle of the road hitting the ball so far this year. They're around the middle of the pack in total run score. Their batting average in general isn't looking great. Their slugging percentage is below average for the league in general, and their on-base percentage is way below low league average. All of those numbers not looking great. Kind of concerning coming into their third game of the series here against the Rays. We see Tampa Bay is minus 160 in this game. That seems a little bit steep to me. We see the Rays minus one and a half. Currently, you can get that at minus 110. So that's looking much more appealing to me. The Colorado Rockies are plus 135. So if we had faith in them in this game, maybe we could ride with Colorado in this one. This is a very tough game because we're looking at two starting pitchers. Neither one of them do I trust very much. Although both of them are young guys, so maybe we could see them pitch slightly better in their second game of the season. I would definitely like the over-under in this game if it wasn't all the way up at 12. We'd be looking towards the over with both of these teams looking with trends to the over, and we still kind of like the over a little bit in this game. Honestly, I would take a look at the over 12, but... I think slightly better than that. I like the Colorado Rockies plus 135. This isn't going to be one of my bigger leans, though. This is a tough game, and I don't really trust either starter. So just take this as a small lean at its face value. This isn't going to be one of my bigger plays today. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all your bets, and subscribe if you're new. And if you want to see this MLB content going forward, let me know in the comments any questions you have about today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out somethingspread.com, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.